up, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of Sports to the Wire. For those of you who are actually new to the show, I am your host, Rashid White. My boy, Barrett Burrell, is on the other side of the panel, co-host over there. What's up, guys? What's going on? All right. So, Bubba Wallace over here, man. NASCAR uh, driver or operator, however you want to splice it there. He's actually <laughs> he's actually saying that Kyle... He's Ritten- blowing out. He's blowing out. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. He's yeah, blowing yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Kyle and Kyle Rittenhouse will be given a life sentence or shot dead. If uh, had been black, no, NASCAR uh, driver Bubba Wallace over uh, Bubba Wallace said, said on Friday, let that boy be black. If he it would have been life, uh, hell, he would have had his uh, life taken before the BS trial. Wallace uh, wrote in a Twitter and uh, t- a tweet after the written house was found not guilty of the homicide of Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's get into this. Let's get into this over here. Oh, I'm to, yeah, I'm going to share this over here. Let everybody see, read what I'm reading over here. But, um, Barrett, take us off on this one, man. Well, it's that. Uh, listen, first of all, Bubba Wallace, you know, accomplished NASCAR rider. You know, he, he won this, uh, his first NASCAR Cup early this year. You know, he won at Talladega, you know, so, uh, you know, that's pretty prestigious. So his, his name is pretty, uh, Pretty, pretty well known within the racing community. But uh, I'm not surprised that Bubba came out and made comments because Bubba's had things thrown against him as well in, in past uh, situations. You know, for example, him being the only person of color that basically is on the NASCAR circuit. So he's had his uh, dark stone in his direction as well. But now you come to the Rittenhouse situation. And, you know, it's, it's a very common thing when people come out and they say, had this person been black, it'd have been a different story. Had this person been black, that would have happened. Had this person been black, this would have happened. And we've seen enough within the judicial system. We've seen things happen where guys have always consistently been of color. And because something happened where you felt like they should have been, you know, cast off or basically held not guilty of certain things, they took the hit for it, you know? So it's a common thing amongst the black community. So I can see when he comes out and says this, but it's not consistently on every case. But right, for the most cases. Uh, so Colin Kaepernick just chimed in over here too. Uh, we just witnessed a system built on white supremacy validating the terrorist acts of a white supremacist. I mean, mm-hmm. yo, listen, what the fuck are you talking about? Listen, the guy was defending himself, all right? He and they showed the finally showed the raw video where he was getting jumped and getting attacked by three men. He got hit in the head with a skateboard. You once you hit someone in the head, I don't care who it is, and you can actually witness somebody doing this. And if you're armed or you can stab them, whatever, whatever the two is, you're authorized to use deadly force against them. I mean, this is a this is an open and shut case. I, I mean, I can probably go and show you hundreds and hundreds of, of, of cases where the person wasn't even charged with the exact same scenario. So, uh, Kaepernick, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? I mean, I mean, I mean, seriously. Well, Kaepernick really shouldn't be having a word, but I'm, I'm going to tell you something in regards to Bubba Wallace, bro. You know, again, like I, I previously mentioned, he's had issues thrown at him. I mean, did you know that he was in his garage and he seen a rope that was in the shape of a noose and they were trying to tell him something. So he's dealt with racism against himself. So I can see where he feels motivated. As far as Colin Ellison, I'm not even going to jump on Colin Kaepernick right now because he, you know, he's already put himself in certain positions himself. Although I do feel like he needs to get another chance to be on the football field as well. I mean, we are always talking about what would normally happen to a person of color or a black man, you know, if the situation had been reversed. Now, obviously, the parents, um, you know, for the victims, especially Anthony Huber, they had different things to say. They were not very happy, obviously, with the outcome, you know. Um, Listen, man, you got to raise your kids right, man. Raise them to be productive members of society. And not going around attacking. Oh, 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 but, but, oh, yeah, but but you know what? We can't sit there and say that they're not a good product of society. I mean, everybody's had a bad day oh, along the line. Felonies. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. I mean, I've been to a couple of protests before. I didn't go off the big deep, and I was there for the reason I was there for. 
I was he's never going to. Well, you burning things down, though. No. But the bottom line is, I'm, I was never thought to go to a protest, but I did it because I felt like the situation required it. It required an extra voice. Some people take things to the next level. First of all, that wasn't a protest. That was a melee. All right? That was looting. All right? In its best form. And people went out there. But, you know, you always have to come out and say, well, Rittenhouse went out there with an AR-15 rifle. Which was actually, uh, legally, he can carry. Uh, that's why the judge actually threw out the weapons charges. He had the legal right to actually carry. Understandable. But you're going to your friend's dealership with an AR-15. AR-15 is not a regular handgun, but it's not a Glock. It's not a Beretta. That's a that's a weapon that is armed to shoot two to three hundred yards away, dead on. That is a powerful weapon with long bullets. All right, yeah, you have firm strong, damage in mind. Strong, that. That's not the weapon he really wanted. If you watch the the trial, his whole testimony, that's not what he wanted. That's what they uh, said, brother. That's what they said. He went across county line with his mom, and he had that AR-15 in his hand. Yeah, Whether he, he wants to or not, he held he on to that bad boy. He was legally had the right to obtain it, though. I mean, they read the law, Barrett. I mean, they. Read I understand. The law. I, I get that. I get that. But see, we always talk about what they put in writing. But what about the common logical portion of this whole thing? If I'm going to a protest, which was supposed to have been a protest, I'm not going to tell you. Let me go and get my Glock 9. Let me go get my AR-15. I'm not thinking yeah, about that. Right. They looted. No, and, I'm and, not. But I'm saying it was supposed to be a protest that turned into a looting. That's what yeah. happened. Well, I mean, he had wind of that, though. They were vandalizing things. He had he had wind of that. Yeah, you better go on. You know, because they were shooting that written house. They had one of them actually had a gun. But why would you? Them. But this whole thing about it, why would you have to go out there and do something for your friend? Shouldn't your friend have something to put in his dealership? Yeah, he had family in Kenosha. He worked in Kenosha. You know, and I'm just going over, you know, what he was saying. And this is from the prosecution itself. They're, they they verify because I watched almost half the trial. And the, the prosecution themselves verified that he worked in Kenosha. His father lived in Kenosha. He volunteered in Kenosha, um, oh, and, and he was actually regular name. This actually came out the prosecution's mouth. You yeah, know? it came out their mouth. But you know what? The actions leading up to it, and then obviously, yeah, you catch the film in which he's running. Why is he running? And that's the whole thing. And then when you finally see everybody, you see him getting jumped on, and then now you're showing validation for him to shoot. So what did he do to start running in the first place? That is always the question. There's plenty exactly. of videos out there now. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. This is the key thing in the trial. Wisconsin is a stand your ground state. All right. Understandable. It's not a retreat state. So let me, and uh, you know this real better, but for the audience stuff, a, re, a, a retreat state is you have to be able to show that you ran away, you know, then you can use deadly force. Stand your ground is you don't have to run. You know, you can actually, if somebody's attacking you with deadly force, you don't have to run. You can actually respond with deadly force. So, uh, retreat states, you actually have to run away. Uh, uh, prove that you actually try to run and then use deadly force. So in the retreat state, he ran away. They got all the videos. I mean, you know. They yeah, he run. was running away. Yeah, he was getting hit in the head. He was running away. He fell down. He turned around while he was on the floor, while he was sitting on his butt. And he aimed his weapon and fired. So here's the thing. Up until that, that's not just that's not retreating, man. My man was running for his life, and he was trying not to shoot. I, that's what the video was showing, and he had no choice but to shoot. So you know, I, I get that in the situation like that. I'm not going to let somebody beat the crap out of me either. But you know, again, there's always going to be two sides of the line, brother. There's two sides of the street, two sides of the coin. There's two sides of everything. I mean, I what mean, led to him running versus wrong. what I he did. The that's the whole concept. He, has, if you've seen a, a, a old lady in the street getting robbed. And, and and getting stomped in the head. I mean, you have a right, Barrett, to, uh, to, to, to protect that old lady with deadly force. Of course, of course. We got the right to do so, but I don't have a weapon on me. I'm going to work or whatever. I'm not walking around with AR-15 on me. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what weapon you have. You know, if you're legally registered to actually, and they were trying to take this gun too. So if you're legally, actually, lawfully can carry a weapon and you see someone getting stomped in the head, like getting robbed and getting stomped in the head, you, Barrick Burrell, can actually go out there and shoot that person. Right no, I, I, I get that. But there's people outside the courthouse even that day with an AR-15. There was a person outside with an AR-15 outside the court. Come on. Come on, man. I mean, why are you yeah, coming in with these kind of weapons, bro? I heard that story. He was a former cop. Yeah. I mean, why are you showing up with an AR-15 outside the courthouse? Why? It's the yeah, same I reason why Rittenhouse did it. I, I, read, I read into that. He got fired. Yeah, but you know what? But you're looking for more damage. You're looking for more collateral damage on this than you are looking to defend yourself. 
if you're not walking, and what I'm saying is, if you're not walking into the walking into the circle with a weapon, right? Then you're not asking for that trouble. You're not asking for that kind of problem. Versus, I got a friend of mine would never walk in the street with a weapon. One day he walks in the street with a weapon, and all of a sudden he got problems coming his way. That's coincidental. But after a while, he said, "You know what? I'm gonna leave my weapon home because I, I don't want to go in the position, get upset, and then I brandish my weapon, and something else is gonna happen." I mean, there's so many well, different I mean, logics to this, bro. Man. You gotta have and, you know, you gotta be a, a a sane, sober, moral person and be disciplined. And and it's, 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 yeah, it's easy to say that. Yeah, I know it's easy to say that, but when you got a weapon, I'm saying to you, when you got a weapon in your hand and someone tests you. You wouldn't have, it seems a different, different kind of patience. Prison. It's a different yeah. kind of patience, bro. Yeah, it really I is. Think prison. I don't tell about just think prison. Think jail. You do you gonna do something, think about that jail time. Think about the defense you have to pay, even if you don't get the jail time, but the defense uh, money you gotta pay these damn attorneys, which is not cheap, could be twenty five thousand dollars, man. You know, yeah. you, you know? Well, you know, and and, and right and, and finally really to look at the whole Bubba the Bubba Wallace thing again. You know, it's probably in the best interest. He just kind of kept his opinions to himself, but it's not an uncommon opinion, believe it or not, especially amongst the black community. It's not an uncommon com uh, a comment, but in his position, I know what was motivating him because he had to deal with racism himself in his own garage. So I see where it's coming from, from his point of view, but this guy's up and coming yeah, in NASCAR yeah, circuit. Yeah, so, yeah, you know. What was that, all that, that whole thing fake with the rope in his, um, I gotta remember that story. I gotta go look that up though. It wasn't that fake, it was a fake noose or something like that. Uh, no, as far as I was able to gather from the story, it wasn't fake news. But did we see the video? No, 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 no we did not. Noose was fake. I mean, he faked the whole thing. So uh, from when I, from when I, no, from what I understand through the case that I, well, the the, the uh, article I read then, uh, it it was led to believe that this was something that actually happened. Remember, he's the only person of color. He's the only black man in NASCAR. All right. So All right. there you have it. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll wrap this video up. If you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe. Certainly share this video. When you share, the universe certainly share back with you. And if it doesn't, Berg will donate an entire paycheck to you, man. You know he's a very, very uh, philanthropist, man. Yeah, I'm very much so. But you better go speak to my wife first. Let's see how that happens. <laughs> I, I will. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right. Good luck. <laughs> All right, guys. Peace. <laughs>